Hello everyone and welcome to the Knit California podcast. My name is Leslie, I am Knit California here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and this is episode 26. Welcome back to the pod. Happy New Year! It's 2023. This is my first podcast episode in the new year and I'm so excited to be back. Uh, we have a finished object that I'm wearing. Um, I painted my nails. Ooh. And um, I have a lot of acquisitions also to show you and some progress on two brand new whips that you have never seen before. So let's get into it. I am wearing my finished Dear Duomo sweater. Uh, this pattern is by Sunghee Knits and the yarn that I used is Explorer Knits and Fibers Cashmere Cavern Sock Base in the colorway Fia from her Ireland collection and it's actually two strands of fingering held double uh, to give it like a DK weight as you're knitting it. Um, overall, we'll just start overall, I am happy with the outcome of the sweater. Um, there are a couple things that I would change but we can get into that later. Um, I think I've only talked about this like two other times in two past episodes of the podcast. Um, this was a relatively quick knit for me. I cast this on December 1st and my goal was it needed to be finished by the end of December. So um, I finished it on December 30th. It was like really coming down to the wire. I was really worried I wasn't going to get it done just with like you know, get-togethers and family things and seeing people and having my best friend come visit me for a couple days. So we were running around, like, hanging out, and I didn't have as much time to knit. But um, when she left, I was able to curl up and <laughs> get this finished um, one day early. It wasn't December 31st. It was December 30th that this was finished on. So that was really exciting. Um, okay, if you are new here, I am doing a drop shoulder sweater comparison series. This is the third sweater in the series that is done. So the first sweater that I knit was the Oslo sweater by Petite Knit. The second sweater that I knit was the Clove sweater um, by Rachel Kurihara. And this is the third one, the Dear Duomo. My next video that's going to be coming out is going to be a comparison of all three of these patterns what I liked about them, which one was my favorite, the yarn choices, how they all fit me, which one am I wearing the most, all of those questions will be answered. Um, but in this video, I really want to go into the details and do a little mini review of this pattern. So I have been keeping decent pretty good notes, I would say, um, of the fit, of the measurements, what size I'm making, the changes that I made to the pattern, all of that stuff. So I'm going to pull up my notes here so I can tell you all of my thoughts. Okay, so I have my notes here that I'm going to be reading from. Um, so if you see me looking at my phone, that's why I want to make sure I cover everything with this. Um, okay, First of all, this is a drop shoulder sweater design. You can see right here, this is where the, the drop is. And this is actually knit bottom up. So you start, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna flash you here, I did that once before. You start at the bottom ribbing and you knit up to where the sleeve decreases are and then you put half of your stitches on hold. You work the back panel first you finish it, you work the front panel, you join at the shoulder seams, you pick up and knit the collar, and then you pick up and knit both of the sleeves. 
This construction method was different than the first two drop shoulders that I made because the first two were knit top down. So I really wanted to add this one to my list because uh, drop shoulders seem to kind of go either way, whether they're knit bottom up or top down. And I prefer to knit top down. I think a majority of knitters, at least that I know and see, um, prefer to knit top down. And so I was worried at first that this was going to be like a weird experience. I was worried that the fit might not end up how I want it to be. I was worried that the fit might not end up how I wanted the fit to be. Just because it's hard to, you can't like put it on over your head and like see where it's at like you can with a top down. Um, it's a little bit different trying something on because you're trying to imagine where the bottom hem is going to hit you in this finished garment, but you don't have the top done yet, so it's a little funky. Um, but the pattern is very well written. Um, there are a lot of details that are written out. There are abbreviations spelled out in like definitions. So I was really happy with how the pattern itself was written and it made the experience of knitting this, even though it was bottom up, a little bit easier and made me like less worried about it. Um, I had also heard a lot of like really, really good reviews from other people who had knit this pattern and they all said amazing things about it. So that also helped me go into knitting this with less of a like negative frame of mind just because it was a bottom up knit. There are also um, two different options for like knitting the top portion here, especially around the neck, um, which I'll get into a little bit more later because I think that you have you will have two different experiences depending on which option you chose, um, which is kind of fun. But <laughs> I'm going to cover that a little bit later. I do have to say, kind of start out by saying I did make a mistake somewhere in knitting this. Um, I picked the size 5, I believe is the extra large, um, but I picked the fifth size in the pattern to make. And at some point as I was knitting this, I thought I had picked the size 4 and I started reading like measurements and stitch counts for the fourth size. And so my sweater ended up kind of like a hybrid size five slash size four, um, where I think the bottom like body part is for the size five, but the like bust measurement and the top portion here is for the size four. When I realized this, I had already completed the back panel and I was on the front panel and at that point I had to make them match so that the like stitch count ended up the same here so I could join them perfectly. And so I just had to <laughs> keep going um, and kind of make some stuff up. But that was my own error. Like I read my patterns on my phone. I don't print them out anymore. So I didn't have things highlighted and I don't know why I thought that, but it happened. Oh, well. So one of the questions that I ask myself and I look at is, did the sweater come out the same or close to the pattern specifications slash measurements. And if we, you know, keep in mind that this is like a hybrid size four slash five, yes it did. The measurements came out um, very close to the size four. Um, so for me, that was, that is six inches of positive ease. Um, I have a 40 inch bust. The sweater ended up being a 46 inches circumference all the way around and the size 4 um, measurement is actually 47 inches around. So very close. Um, I'm gonna call it a win there. Do you like the amount of ease? Do I like the amount of ease in this sweater? So I think if this was the first drop shoulder that I had made I would have said yes. 
Um, I like my sweaters to be a little bit more oversized, um, so six inches of positive ease is pretty good. However, in comparing it to the other two that I had uh, that I have previously knit, the Oslo and the Clove, those are more 10 inches and 11 inches of positive ease, and I actually like those a little bit more. So, if I had ended up <laughs> knitting the correct size in this, the size 5, um, this would have been closer to that 10 inches of positive ease. I think I would have liked it a little bit more. How was reading the pattern? Reading the pattern was easy, like I said before. It was a very well written pattern, so I didn't have any issues there. My own like user error was just reading the wrong size and the wrong stitch count and that had nothing to do with how the pattern was actually written. Okay, were there any tricky parts in the pattern? For me, um, shaping the shoulders here was a bit tricky. It was not impossible, um, but I do think it's something to kind of keep an eye on and if you're going to make this pattern, just make sure you read through. Like I said, there are two different options. I would recommend reading through both of them first before you decide which option you're going to choose. Um, I ended up choosing, let's see, the two options that you are given for shaping the shoulders. One is a short row shaping, which is what I did, and the other is a sloped bind off shaping. I ended up choosing the short row shaping so that I could do a three needle bind off at the end here at the shoulders. Um, that was not, if you had chosen the other method, then you would have bound off both the front and the back, and you would have had to do like a mattress stitch to seam this up. Um, I had never done the three needle bind off before, and I wanted to try it. I kind of wanted to avoid seaming just in case I like totally mess things up. Um, which I don't know honestly if that was like the right choice for me or not, just with how some of the other details ended up here. And what I mean by that is, let me see if I can get closer so you can see. So right here and over here, I ended up with these like little holes in the neckline of the sweater just from how you knit like back and forth here um, in this part of the pattern. And like when I went to pick up the stitches for the neck band, it was like some stitches were like way bigger than the other stitch right next to it. And it just led to these kind of really big holes that you can see right here. What I did was I went back and on the inside, I like tried to really tried to seam this together to close up any of those holes. Which I think if you are a non-knitter looking at this, like, you won't notice it at all. Um, and I do think I did a pretty good job at closing them up, but you can still kind of see, like, I can point them all out where they are. Um, and that is something that's different from the other two sweaters that I did. Like, I didn't have any, I've never had that sort of issue pop up. Um, in picking up a neck band, neck band on like any of the sweaters that I've done. So I just thought that was really interesting and it just makes me wonder to myself if that same sort of thing would have happened if I had done the other shaping method, um, the bind off shaping method. Like I don't know if this was because of the short rows and like the turns that were happening. Um, I honestly don't know. It's it was kind of weird, um, but and so I don't know if this is like just a my issue or if it's just like the method from the pattern. I don't know. Any other tricky parts? So what the other note that I have in here is just the fact that it's a bottom up knit. I think for some people this would be a little bit more tricky compared to a top down knit. The one thing that I was worried about was the length of the sweater, and I do think I came up with a pretty good method for figuring out whether or not the length is going to be right for me or not. I actually took the sweater that I had just finished, the clove sweater, and I measured the length from right under the neckband to the very bottom of the sweater. Um, and that was about, it was like 17 or 18 inches. 
And so then I was able to take that measurement and know that that's what I was aiming for with this sweater because I liked the length of that. I looked at the schematic and there's when you get to the point where you're about to split for the sleeves here like the pattern does tell you to stop and to like measure the length and to make sure you're good with the length um, and so I did that at that point I figured out you know she gives you the measurement from the shoulder to the underarm so you can like add those inches to the inches of the body that you currently have done and figure out if that's going to be enough for the length that you want for your sweater. So I would also just make sure if you're going to knit this or any other bottom up sweater that you take the time, like put the needles down, take the time to take the measurements and make sure that the sweater is gonna end up being the length that you want it to be and that you'll end up wearing. So, um, when before I had like even started this that was one thing that I was worried about but it ended up not being an issue at all because I knew how to handle it so I'm pretty proud of myself for like figuring that one out and learning that and then actually putting it into practice um, okay did you change anything about the pattern um, not on purpose no <laughs> Just the uh, size issue that I've already spoken about, um, but there is one thing that I would like to go back and fix, so I don't know if you can see this, but the sleeves ended up not stretching as much as I thought they would in blocking. There's a good one to two inches um, just more that I would like to add to the sleeves and I'm actually thinking of adding like a little bit longer and just like having it there so I can like fold it over. Um, my Oslo sweater, the sleeves stretched like incredibly long <laughs> and so I've been folding it back and I really really like the look of that. So you can see they ended up like bracelet length which I do know like there are people out there that this is their preferred sweater length and I kind of wish that was my preferred sweater length just so that I wouldn't have to go back and add more but unfortunately it's not. I do prefer to have sweaters that like you know come up to like the bottom of my hands um, just because like I wore this to the office a couple times so far and my wrists get cold and it makes like my hands cold and it just makes the rest of me feel cold so I need to add it to the pile I don't know if you can see over here there's my sweater number 15 that I still need to go back and fix the one sleeve on so now I've got three sleeves that I need to go back and fix um, but again this is not you know any fault to the pattern I have slightly longer arms uh, for my like height so I just need to go back and add some extra length it is what it is it's not it's not a huge issue all right, is this pattern beginner friendly? Um, again, this has been my answer for the other two as well. I would say yes and no. Um, I don't think I would recommend a drop shoulder sweater pattern for someone who is making a sweater for the very first time. I would recommend like a round yoke or a raglan uh, design first just because I think they're going to be a little bit easier. I would also recommend knitting if you're a brand new beginner. I would also recommend knitting a sweater top down before starting with something that's bottom up. Um, one of the first tops that I made actually was knit bottom up. I made the dive tee from We Are Knitters and that was knit flat and seamed and bottom up. And I had like no idea what I was doing. You know when you first start and you're just like, ah, oh, I found a pattern, yeah, I'm just gonna like do what it says. Like you have no idea in the world. You didn't even check gauge. Um, <laughs> somehow it ended up great. It fits me really well. Um, but I would never do that now at this point in my knitting career. So, um, yeah, if this, if, 
you were to just like pick a drop shoulder sweater to like knit for the first time let's say you've made some sweaters before and you want to knit a drop shoulder like yes I do think this is doable um, as your very first drop shoulder I think any of these patterns are which is good do you like the yarn choice in general? And do you like the yarn choice for this pattern? So yes and yes, but with some caveats here. This yarn is actually one of the recommended yarns for this pattern. So the designer, uh, Sung Hee Hong, um, actually knit one of the samples in two strands of Cashmere Cavern sock from Explorer Knits and Fibers in her Duomo colorway, which is I think part of the reason why this sweater is called the Dear Duomo sweater um, and that colorway is absolutely gorgeous. It's very similar in like colors and tones and vibe to this colorway, Fia from the Ireland collection, um, which is one of the reasons why I picked this colorway specifically for this sweater. Um, so I really love it. This color has like, I think it's kind of getting washed out just from the light in here. It's like a really cloudy day outside. It's supposed to rain later. Um, if you don't know, we're getting like these big storms in California. So anyways, that's not important to this. Um, but there are some like purples and like teal, like light teal colors um, in here. They kind of merge together to make some browns and some dark grays. So it's very subtle, but it's really nice. So one of the things that I actually don't like as much and I think this is something that I could have fixed but I didn't because I had met Gage um, was this fabric just in general like feels a little like dense and thick and I think it's because it's two strands held together I almost wish I had gone up a needle size um, and knit this at like a slightly larger gauge just to give the two strands like more room in general to like bloom and to like grow um, and to not be as dense. I think it would have made the drape a little bit better. I think it would have made just like the fit a little bit gen better in general. Although some of the fit issues I'll talk a little bit more about also later. Let me make sure I made a note on that. Yeah, I did. Um, but like that's that's just one of the things and that's like look you make a swatch right I did swatch for this but your swatch is only like this big so how are you really gonna know how it's gonna feel until the whole thing is done you've washed and blocked it and you're actually wearing it it's it's hard to tell and like that's something that I think as knitters like we're all working on is to like better understand sweater construction and yarn choice and like how it's all going to turn out before we even start knitting it so that we're making the right choices in yarn and size and like garment size and needle size and all of that. Um, but it's a difficult thing so you know. Okay. Um, let's move on. Wearability. Okay, I have to be honest, I finished this, what's today? Today's the January 14th, so this has been finished for like 14, 15 days. <laughs> um, this has not been the sweater that I am reaching for and gravitating for most frequently in that time period. Um, I have been reaching for another one more. And I'm going to save that for the next episode for the comparison video. Um, if you've watched any of my last episodes, you can probably guess which one it is because I feel like I'm wearing that sweater in like all of the last like three or four episodes. Um, but yeah, that's the one that I've been reaching for mostly. Um, and I do think I know why. I think it's because of the lower amount of positive ease that's in this sweater. This sweater also has waist shaping um, along the sides here. So if you don't, I mean, you can't see it right in here. Um, but if you don't know what that is, it's when, I guess if you're knitting it bottom up, you knit the ribbing, the band, and then you're actually going to do some increases to make the sweater wider for when it meets your bust. 
Now if you're knitting this top down, you're doing decreases, so that's why it's like waist shaping. You're shaping it into your waist, which is like theoretically a smaller part of your body compared to like your hips and your bust, right? Um, and I almost wish I had not done the waist shaping. I wish I had left it just straight um, because the waist shaping plus the really thick button, uh, not button band, but ribbing, like bottom ribbing of this just leads to like, it kind of feels like it really pulls in at the bottom, which is like fine if you're okay with that style um, but one of the other sweaters that I have that I really like more it doesn't do that and it's more like just like square and like open at the bottom which for me is a little bit more comfortable so that's the main piece of the wearability the second thing is and you've probably noticed me already like adjusting this but the neckband ended up like wider than I thought it would be this is wider than like a lot of my other sweaters a lot of my other sweaters like you know come up to here and like feel cozy it just like feels more open and like colder and like I guess you can put on like a scarf or a, you know a neck accessory over this um, but I don't wear those very often because it you know it doesn't get that cold here in Southern California um, so it just feels like I've got like a weird open <laughs> neck situation going here um and I really only notice that when I'm like looking at myself in the mirror I don't really notice it when I'm wearing it and I'm like out and about like I'm not always like oh the neck it feels weird um because it doesn't feel weird it just kind of like visually to me looks a little funny but I know you guys are all gonna say it looks great <laughs> so thank you in advance um okay were yarn measurements accurate um Yes, but I do think that they recommended like a little bit more yarn than like actually needed um, and like kind of in a big way. And I do wonder if this is because my sizing ended up being off. Um, but let me just tell you. So for the size 5, it's recommended to get seven skeins of the cashmere sock, which is just over 3,000 yards of fingering weight. I purchased six, um, just because I knew I was like, seven sounds like too many. <laughs> like, I've made other sweaters in like five skeins of this, so I don't know if I need seven so I bought six I compromised um, which ended up being about 2600 yards of fingering and I have left over um, let me show you where I put them I have this much left over which if you're like that kind of looks like two 50 gram balls you would be correct because this is 109 grams of fingering weight so that's right at that 435 yards this is basically one skein fully left over so I did complete this using only five skeins however I'm gonna go back and add length to the sleeves so you know if I had done that originally and if I had knit this at the true size 5 um, I think we would have been good like I would have used more of this sixth skein and I will go back and use more of this sixth skein so that's where we're at with that that's the yarn recommendations um, okay next question is this pattern size inclusive this pattern is sized from 35 and a half inches to 67 inch finished measurements which includes the six to eight inches of positive ease so yes, um, I think in the community size inclusivity goes up to about 60 inch bust. So yes, we are there. And last but not least, was this an enjoyable experience? Yes, it was. Um, I didn't have any issues knitting this until I realized like the sizing thing and that was my own fault and honestly I didn't really let it bother me that much. Um, I just kept going and made sure that the front and back were the same and it ended up really being fine. 
Would I make this pattern again? I'm gonna be completely honest and say I don't know. Um, I did prefer knitting the top down more than knitting the bottom up and with these little like issues that I had in like the neck shaping and the neckline, um, I don't know if I would knit this one again right away. There are other like drop shoulder sweaters that I haven't knit yet that I would like to um, have a stab at before I knit this one again, if that makes sense. So that is everything you need to know about the Dear Duomo sweater. If you have any questions about this or about the Oslo sweater or the clove sweater, please leave them down below. If you have any like comparison questions that you are dying to know, please also leave them down below so that I can work those into my comparison video that's going to be coming out next week. I asked, I had a question box up um, uh, last week or the week before as I started to like write my notes down for that video. So on Instagram, I did that. So I have a bunch of questions from Instagram already, but if you did not see that on Instagram and you have questions that you want to leave down below, please make sure you do that and I will incorporate those into the next video. All right, let's move on because I have a couple other things that I want to show you and we're already at like 30 minutes here so um i you know as one sweater comes off the needles another sweater goes on to the needles and i am really excited to show you guys this sweater um not only because like i've made a lot of progress but it's really just it's really gorgeous not to like toot my own horn here but it's really gorgeous and most of it has to do with the yarn so you know um and if you're a fan of explorer knits and you liked this yarn then i think you'll also be a fan of this sweater as well so without further ado here it is dun, 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 dun. i love it so much all right this is okay the pattern the pattern is the cozy classic raglan by jesse made designs and the yarn that i'm using is explorer knits and fibers in her rockies dk base in the colorway court of dreams and i'm actually holding it with let me show you full skein um, i'm actually holding it with one strand of this laying lace in the colorway storm blue i just thought these like colors went so well together um and they really do i think the fabric that it's making is absolutely gorgeous it's really really soft so this lang lace is like mohair but it's like the fanciest silk mohair ever. I used this on my souffle tee in a different color, but it's 58% mohair and 42% silk. A lot of other mohairs that you see, especially from hand dyers, are only like 28% silk, something around there, and this is 42% silk. That's a lot of silk. So this is like really, really soft, really, really silky. It's really nice to work with, and I think it's going to be really nice to wear with this. Okay, so something else that I need to point out. This pattern um, is, it's, it calls for DK weight yarn, which this is a DK weight yarn. You're going to say, but you're using a DK weight yarn and you're adding a mohair. Doesn't that make the weight go up to like worsted or something near there and to that i would say yes kind of but also here's the deal the gauge that you're supposed to knit this on this sweater specifically is 18 stitches per four inches all of the other sweaters in my sweater comparison series are dk weight sweaters and they all have gauges that are between 20 and 22 stitches per four inches. So 18 stitches per four inches is way different. This is a way looser gauge 
compared to all of the other sweaters that I'm making, like this for example. This one was a 20 stitch gauge, and this is 18. I knew that that was gonna be an issue for me. I knew that I was gonna have trouble meeting 18 stitches just using the DK weight alone. So what I did was I added the mohair and I went up a needle size. So I'm working on five millimeter needles. The pattern recommends 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, and I met gauge, at least in my swatch, I met gauge. I was able to like, I know they say don't stretch your swatches, but I stretched it just a little bit and I was able to meet gauge, which I'm really happy about. So that is where we are at with this. I'm actually on to the ribbing um, and I'm really excited about it. So there are a couple things that I changed besides that. That was one of them, the yarn choice. The second was... Okay, and I've made this pattern before, so when I finish this, I'm gonna do a whole, like, yeah, oh, oh, hold on. I have too many things, too many things that I need to say. Okay, rewind. Okay. With the Dear Duomo being complete, that is three drop shoulder sweaters being complete. The comparison video is coming out for that. I'm now moving on to knitting three raglan design sweaters and um, this is the first one in my raglan design sweater knitting knitathon knitting marathon series and at the end of knitting all three of those so January, February, March in like April I'm gonna have another video that's going to be comparing all three of these raglan design sweaters. Okay piece one. Piece two, I have knit the Cozy Classic Raglan before, so when I finish knitting this and I do the review of this sweater, I'm going to compare it also to the first time that I knit this. So it's going to be like a, <laughs> what did baby knitter Leslie do that more experienced knitter Leslie changed in knitting this pattern? Because there are definitely some differences. Um, and I'm going to tell you some of them right now because I have knit this pattern before and I knew going into knitting it again that there were things that I was going to do differently. Um, because like the bare bones structure of this pattern is great. I love like this is a cozy classic raglan. Like this is the perfect name for this sweater because it's just a classic raglan style sweater. Um... But there were some design choices that I, I just didn't want to do. So the first one, um, if you've ever knit this pattern, it tells you to do a provisional cast on and to do all of these setup rows just to get the like very beginning of the neck. So that provisional cast on and setup rows nonsense, I did not want to deal with. Um, and I actually, in knitting the Dear Duomo, learned the ribbed cabled cast on um, that I really liked. It's very stretchy and I used it for casting on uh, the neckband here. And I really like how it looks. It gives you a similar look to like the um, tubular bind off. Let me hide my face so you can see this maybe. So you can kind of see like it kind of looks like the tubular sewn bind off, which is what I was going for. I didn't want it to be like, just like a long tail cast on where you have like a different look. Um, so I'm really happy with that for now. We'll see how it looks when I block this, like how it opens up, but I'm really happy with it for now. The second change that I made was to the raglan increases. The pattern calls for lifted increases lifted increases <laughs> so the left lifted increase and the right lifted increase and I just remember I had so much trouble with these last time I knit the sweater and like yes I could have gone to the video tutorials and looked up how to do these again and I probably would have like done them well and like been fine with it 
but I didn't do that. I'm like way more comfortable with make one rights and make one lefts. And so I edited the pattern slightly, just slightly, um, to do a make one right, knit one stitch, make one left. Now, technically, I wasn't going to tell you this, but I'm going to just say it now anyway. Technically, that made the stitch counts off a little bit. So my front part between the raglan is technically like two stitches smaller than the back raglan because you start doing the raglan in the middle, well, when you start doing the short rows in the back. And if I had thought about this for like a couple more minutes, I would have changed where my stitch markers were because on one side you're doing the raglan increases like on the knit side, on the right side of the fabric, and on the other side when you go back and forth, you're doing the increases on the purl side, on the wrong side. And long story short, it just made the stitch counts between raglans off a little bit, but I did make them symmetrical, so it's not like one sleeve and the back is going to be bigger than the front and the other sleeve, it's like the front versus the back, which I think will be fine. I don't think I'm going to have any issues with this when I end up wearing it. So, that's that. Let's see, what else did I change? I added half an inch to the body, and I was going to try it on. I made all of these notes uh, in my knitting journal, and I was like, try on the sweater before you start the ribbing. And I didn't. I started the ribbing yesterday without <laughs> trying it on. Um, but I'm not worried. I measured it. And I'm doing 3 inches of ribbing. It measured 15 inches. I'm doing 3 inches of ribbing. That equals 18 inches. That is the same length as this sweater and the clove sweater that I like wearing. I actually added another half inch. I was like, let's make this half an inch longer and see how I like that. So we're just going to go with it. Um, in blocking, I'm hoping to actually gain more width compared to length. So I might lose that half an inch, which is like fine because I added it in in the first place. So it'll end up being 18 inches instead of 17 and a half. All that to say, you know, listen to your notes. If you tell yourself to try it on, actually do it. Don't just do what I do because I didn't try it on. But... I'm really happy with it. This project is bringing me a lot of joy. I just love the colors so much. I think it's so pretty. And I honestly just want it to be done. I just want to wear this so bad. But I'm close. We're going to finish the ribbing this weekend. And then we're going to start the sleeves. And so um, the goal is to have this done by the end of January. And I see absolutely no issues with that happening. I think it'll actually be done before the end of January, so that'll be great, and then I can, you know, then I'll have the decision of, should I just cast on the next one, or should I cast on something else? <laughs> uh, I shouldn't cast on anything new, because I really need to finish my champagne cardigan that has gotten zero love in a long time, and I really just need to finish that, but, you know, instead of that... I did cast on a new project last weekend, although this one's going relatively fast, um, and it's really different from, I think, anything you've seen from me, so here you go. Whoa. Hold on, there's some major color pooling here. Wow, I didn't even notice that until I held it up to the camera. Do you see that? Look at this. This whole strip right here. Oh my gosh. You don't even, you barely even see that in person. That is wild. Okay. Wow. That is wild. Anyways, um, I'm making this big rectangle <laughs> out of, let me get a full skein for you. This is the We Are Knitters, the wool in the colorway Neon Marshmallow. And I was gifted five balls of this um, by Caleb 
my stepson last year on Valentine's Day, and it was very, very sweet. Um, is this a yarn or a color that I ever would have bought for myself? No. <laughs> but it's fine. Like, what we are doing with this is we are actually making something for him. So, this... I cannot get over this. Like, how did that happen? Like, everything else is, like, fine. And, like, nicely, we've almost got these little, like, zigzags. And then this is just like, nope, we're just gonna have one big panel here with, like, ten rows of the same colors. So weird. Anyways, this is gonna be a pillowcase cover for him. Um, and for some reason... I decided to buy a body pillow that's like four feet <laughs> in length. Oh gosh. I think I'm going to ditch that plan and just use a regular pillow. So it's going to fold like this. And then I'm going to, you know, seam up the bottom and seam up the side and then the pillow will fit in. I might just go... Honestly, I might just go see if one of his regular pillows would fit in this now. Um, and add just a little bit more length to it. I'm going to eventually block this. So I know it'll grow a lot when I block it too. This yarn and like the the petite wool also and the merry wool. The merry wool specifically, especially, um, is known for like stretching a lot when it blocks. So, um... Yeah, but it's been kind of fun, but also kind of not fun. I'll be honest, like, I'm using size 10 millimeter needles. Yeah, this is a US 15 10 millimeter needle. And this has just been, like, really hard to knit. Like, the yarn is so thick. This is, like, super extra bulky yarn. Um... It's so thick, the needles are so big, like yeah I'm doing garter stitch so it's literally just like knit knit knit, but I feel like I'm moving so slowly in all of my stitches because I can't hold the yarn that, the same way that I do on, you know, like 5 millimeter needles, it's literally half the size. Um, it's just different, like it's just like too thick, like it, it doesn't go over my pinky and like there isn't enough room for all of it to maneuver. It's crazy. Um. But we're going to get it done. I really want to get these out of my stash. Although I'm on to my third ball. The, the like body pillow size was good because I was pretty sure I could like get through all five balls. But I kind of just want to be done <laughs> with the third ball and just be done with it. So we'll see. I don't know. I did want to get all five of these out of my stash though because they're just big like it's not a lot of like yardage and weight but like it's huge like these take up like half of a cube <laughs> you can see how many skeins there's like 30 skeins in that one cube and then like half of one is just full of five of these it's ridiculous um so that's my like secondary project right now um my goal i already told you but well let me show you so i've started this is my like bullet 2023 bullet journal um, and I've started like a project page for every project that I'm doing and I also have like my January knitting and my knitting like to-do list in here so see if I can show you and also see what this is saying okay yeah I think you can see this so the first week of January my goal was to do the raglan finish the yoke on my cozy classic which I was able to do I actually finished that like pretty early in the week and so that's when I cast it on um, the neon marshmallow pillowcase and here we go so the second week here my goal is to finish the body of the Cozy Classic, which I do think I'll get that done by the end of the weekend, but I also wanted to finish the pillowcase this week because I thought I would be finishing the body earlier in the week just based on how last week went, and we're not there. Like, I'm still working on the ribbing, which is fine. 
like that's how it is so i don't know if i'm gonna finish the pillowcase this weekend or if that's gonna end up i put a little like arrow because like maybe this will move to the week after um but i'm really enjoying like making this um kind of like to-do list and like calendar sort of for myself for my knitting and my thought is like once I finish the neon marshmallow, I'm gonna have like some space open in my calendar. So like next week is work on sleeve one and the week after that is work on sleeve two. So it's like if I finish sleeve one before the end of the week, I can either start on sleeve two and just like keep going or like I can pull out my champagne cardigan and like make another note, like another goal for myself. For the champagne cardigan which is something that I've been wanting to work on and wanting to finish um, but I haven't felt like I have the time when like now that I'm writing this out it's like I do have the time I just didn't know I had the time you know because like for example last week like I finished that yoke like early in the week um, to be fair like I had a no yeah, January 1st through 8th. Like, I had January 1st and January 2nd off of work, so that's why. Oh, this was a little bit longer, too, because January 1st was a Sunday, and so there was, like, an extra day tacked in there. Anyways, it doesn't really matter. But, like, I had the time to, like, cast on something else and, like, still meet all of my goals for that week. So, I'm really enjoying... What I'm trying to get to is I'm really enjoying... I really am enjoying writing down these goals and like seeing how much extra time I actually have um, and I think this is going to be really handy if I want to like start throwing in some extra knits like for example some more Oslo hats I have on my list um, a whole extra sweater I really have on well I mean like two or three extra sweaters now that I really have on my to-do list that I want to make um, that don't fit into like my general plans here um, so we'll see we'll see what happens um, I'm also keeping track here on the other page of like projects started, projects finished, and like yarn acquisitions and stuff purchases. So at the end of each month, um, I will be going through on the podcast and like talking about my yarn stash and if it's growing or shrinking because one of my goals by the end of the year is just to end up with less skeins in my stash than where I started on January 1st, which was 335 skeins. And I can tell you right now, well, let's see, minus, see my minuses though aren't fully accurate, so I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm saying that I've already, like, I'm using five skeins of the wool neon marshmallow, but, like, what if I end up only using three? So then I'm going to have to go back in and edit this. But right now I am minus overall for the month of January, but we're only halfway through the month, so we'll see what's going to happen and how much more yarn I'm going to buy that's going to arrive. <laughs> Anyways, um, something else I wanted to show you, this just became a like show and tell of my journal now, but I'm keeping track of how often I'm wearing my knits and my finished objects, which is something that I want to start doing more because I found that I just like wasn't wearing stuff that I'm knitting, which is like no fun, like why are we knitting it if we're not wearing it? And then each of my projects also has its own page that I'm like keeping all of my notes on. So eventually all of those will get transferred um, to my Ravelry project. So that'll be fun too. Okay, this is turning out to be an extraordinarily long podcast episode. And I didn't really intend for it to be this long, but I do have a couple more things that I want to show you. Because even though I'm trying to reduce my yarn stash, of course I'm still buying yarn, and I have some yarn acquisitions, so without further ado, they're all still in plastic, so excuse me. Let me show you this. Do you know what this is? Okay, if you're a fan of Sorella yarn, this is Wine Bottle Green by Sorella Yarn. 
and I bought this on Cashmere DK. I bought five skeins of it, so this is enough to make a sweater, and I just love it. I think this like dark kind of foresty army green um, is actually like a pretty good color for me, so I'm really really excited about this. And I did. I'm pretty sure I had a sweater in mind for this. Oh no, never mind. That was for a different sweater. A different yarn purchase that I <laughs> that I made that is a really pretty sweater though and I'm excited to make it. When that yarn comes in I'm going to show you that and it'll be good. Okay? Um, so I guess I don't have a pattern in mind picked out for this yet but it's going to be good when I do. The color is coming up a little bit darker than what it actually is because of the lighting in here right now. It's just how it is. It's a cloudy day out. I don't know what to say. But this is going to go... I can put that away in my stash now because I've showed it to you. It has already been added to my yarn inventory tracking spreadsheet, which, oh, if you didn't see that on Instagram, let me know. I'm always down to do more like yarn tracking inventory spreadsheet videos, but I always think they're boring. So like I love it, but I feel like other people might not love it. But anyways, okay. I have one more yarn acquisition to show you. <laughs> okay, this is seven skeins of yarn that are all different colors. I bought a full collection of something because I just couldn't resist it. It's so pretty. Okay, here we go. Here it is. This is the, uh, I should have, home for the holidays. So, this yarn is from Witchfire Fibers, and this is the full collection from her home for the holidays collection. Um, I saw this on Instagram and I was like, I need that. That color palette is beautiful. I cannot pick one single color, so I just picked all seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, but it's this palette of reds and greens, kind of like pinks and greens actually. So here are the pinky reds. This is rosy, the middle is comfort, and this is called mold, like mold wine. Just flopping all over. So that's really like reds. And then the greens, this is sagebrush. Tender Hearted and Verdant. It's so gorgeous. And then the collection comes with one that's like neutrally speckled. Can you see the like blue speckles on there? White. And this is called Fractals. And my thought for my thought for this is an Andrea Mallory pattern called stripes all caps exclamation mark um, and I think I'm gonna do like the pattern is a round yoke neck with like equal stripes um, which I think I don't know I don't know if I am gonna use the white I was kind of thinking like I could do like a thin stripe like in between each of the other stripes to like break it up or there is this picture that I was obsessed with although see the white is in this picture um it's right in the middle I think I'm gonna do it like in this order because I really like the order of the yarns in this photo um so yeah the white will be in there it'll just be in the middle so anyways it'll be they're not in the order but it'll be great i'm really excited about this um and i just really want to cast it on but i don't have i might have time it depends we'll see we'll see when that happens but the yarn was just like way too gorgeous and i couldn't pass it up so i love it um okay a couple other things I have two 
stitch marker orders that came in that I'm really excited about. And the first one is from Super Glow Fibers. Can you see these little happy face flower stitch markers? I'm obsessed. She had these in like all different colors and I got the pink, the blue, and the like white yellow. And they're so cute. I'm really excited about those. And her cards are really cute. I thought this was a sticker, but it's like her thank you card. But I think I'm going to tape this into my knitting journal because I've been... I've been taping some of my stickers in here. Where did I put them? There we go. On the front, front page, some of my knitting stickers. So I think I'll put this one, like, here or on the next page. Like, this is just blank, blank pages. So something like that. I'll put there... Ugh, I'll put it in there somewhere because I really like it. I thought it was really cute. It says um, stop and squish the yarn with the flowers. So I love that. And then last but not least, I ordered the stitch marker set from Sassafras Knits. Let's see. Can you see this one on this side right here? It's a D20, like, D&D &D dice, and I love it. She had these, I saw them on Instagram, and I was like, I need that immediately, and I went and ordered, and you could, like, choose, you could, like, put in the order description, like, what color beads you wanted, and so I think I put, like, pinky, purple, something, <laughs> and so I got all of these, like, pinky burgundy colors that I love and I'm really excited about the like hexagon shaped um holders to like try those out and then the D&D &D dice is like a lobster clasp which those are really useful and I use those as regular stitch markers sometimes or as progress keepers so I've been holding on to some of this for a while because I haven't done a regular podcast in like three or four weeks. So I'm really excited to like put this stuff away now and just like reset the the cubes here. You might also notice that like this one is starting to look empty. This one was like totally full. I have pulled out a ton of yarn to de-stash. Basically what happened was like December 31st. Um... I took my laptop and I wrote in my yarn inventory spreadsheet every single skein of yarn that I have over here. And some of them that I like knew immediately I didn't really want to keep anymore. I pulled them out and I have them in bags over there to do a de-stash. And I don't know what platform this is going to be on, I don't know when that's going to be, but it's gonna happen. And I think there's more here also that I'm gonna get rid of. I just haven't made the <laughs> emotional unattachment, unattachment, yes. Wow, I haven't made the emotional unattachment yet to those skeins, um, but they're on my yarn spreadsheet as like D stash question mark. So that's like step one. But anyways, we're moving line right along. It is the middle of January. Um, I hope you're doing great. I do want to say we are like almost at 950 subscribers here on the Knit California YouTube channel, which is just like so close to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Um, so thank you so much to those of you who have subscribed, and if you're watching and you've really enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Um, it helps YouTube know that this is a channel that people like watching, and then maybe it'll recommend my video to other people just to help the channel grow. So it really means a lot, um, and I really appreciate it too. So. That's where I'm going to end it for today. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and get some knitting or crochet time in and I will see you next week for my very exciting drop shoulder comparison video. So I hope you come back for that one. Alright, talk to you later. Bye!